Hello, and welcome to another episode of I Know How This Works. Today we're gonna discuss JavaScript closures. But before we do, I wanna say hello and thank you to my sponsors, awesomewebstore.com, where you can find the latest information on the tech news and how to automate your business or how to run your online business. That1t.com, where you can find images and info on where to find the freshest and latest graphic tees, and also how to get your own graphic tee business up and running. And our last sponsor, 5-10.club. That's where you can buy clothing at near wholesale prices in quantities of five or 10 check them out they have a variety of colors a lot of colors you probably won't check out or see in your retail stores or on other sites now back to JavaScript closures I know how this works and I am awful brown closures can be very simple there's some trickiness to it but basically the concept of the closures is that the function that is inside of another function is a closure and it has access to the parameters and the variables defined outside of it, right? So this function here is my closure and it has access to this variable, num1, and these parameters, a, b, of function my math. And if you go through this whole function, your math will return num1, plus A plus B, and when I'm returning your math, what I end up with is 10. So this is the integer 10. Think of closures kind of like children or grandchildren. They pretty much own or have access to anything that is yours, right? If it's your child, if you get a drink at a restaurant, the baby's gonna want a sip of that and the baby's gonna get a sip of that. So, closures, they have access to the variables above them and the parameters above them. And there you go. Again, I am Awful Brown and this is I Know How This Works. And thank you again to the sponsors, awesomewebstore.com, that1t.com, and 5-10.club. See you next time on I Know How This Works.